Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde were an American criminal couple who went on a notorious two-year crime spree during the Great Depression. Bonnie Parker was born on the 1st of October 1910 in Rowena, Texas to Henry and Emma Parker. During high school, Bonnie met Roy Fortin, who she married in 1926, six days before her 16th birthday. In 1929, Fortin was charged with robbery and sentenced to five years in prison. They never divorced. Bonnie then moved back in with her mother and worked as a waitress in Dallas, but became unemployed during the start of the Great Depression. Clyde Barrow was born on the 24th of March 1909 in Teleco, Texas to Henry and Cummy Barrow. The family moved to a rough neighborhood in West Dallas. Clyde and his older brother, Marvin Ivan Buck Barrow, were often in trouble with the law for stealing. Clyde was first arrested in late 1926 at the age of 17 after running when police confronted him over a rental car that he had failed to return on time. Bonnie and Clyde met in January 1930 and many historians believe it was love at first sight and they spent a lot of time together during the following weeks. But in April 1930, Clyde was arrested for auto theft and sentenced to two years in prison for previous crimes. Clyde escaped from jail using a gun that Bonnie had smuggled in, but was recaptured and sentenced to 14 years in prison and sent to East Ham Prison Farm. Clyde was small at 5 foot 7 and weighing 130 pounds and was targeted by 6 foot tall Big Ed Crowder who repeatedly sexually assaulted him until Clyde retaliated by killing him with a pipe, crushing his skull. This was Clyde's first murder, but an inmate who was serving a life sentence in the prison took responsibility for the murder. To avoid hard labour in the fields, Clyde had two of his toes chopped off and he walked with a limp for the rest of his life. But a few days later, on the 2nd of February 1932, Clyde was paroled. He swore that he would rather die than return to prison. After leaving prison, Clyde went back to Robin. In April 1932, Clyde and a man called Ray Hamlinton staged another robbery, but it went wrong and the general store's owner was killed. Knowing that he wasn't going to go back to prison, Clyde went on the run and Bonnie made the decision to join him, even knowing that if caught, it was very likely that it meant death for both of them. For the next two years, Bonnie and Clyde robbed across Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Louisiana and New Mexico, staying close to the state's borders. They changed cars frequently, learned the back roads and managed to escape several police ambushes. They even took trips to visit their family. After a year on the run, Clyde's brother Buck was released from prison and Bonnie and Clyde went to see him and his wife Blanche for a reunion. After two weeks of spending time together, the police showed and a shootout started and one policeman was killed and another wounded. They managed to get away, but the police found rolls of film, which included now famous images of Bonnie and Clyde holding guns and a poem written by Bonnie. Pictures and the poem increased Bonnie and Clyde's fame. In June 1933, Clyde crashed the car when he realised too late that the bridge ahead had been closed off. Bonnie's leg was badly burned in the accident and she never walked properly again. On the 19th of July 1933, the police were tipped off by locals that Bonnie, Clyde, Blanche, Buck and W.D. Jones, a member of the Barrow Gang, were staying at the Red Crown Tavern in Platte City, Missouri. Another shootout took place and Buck was shot in the head and shards from a shattered window severely damaged Blanche's eye. They all escaped, but on the 24th of July, they were surrounded by more than 100 policemen. Buck was shot several times and died a few days later. Blanche was captured and Bonnie and Clyde managed to escape again. In November 1933, Jones was captured and told the police of how close Bonnie and Clyde were with their families. After this, the police began watching their families in hope to capture Bonnie and Clyde if they visited them. In January 1934, Clyde helped his old friend Raymond Hamlinton break out of prison. A guard was killed and several prisoners escaped. 
One of the prisoners was Henry Methvin, who began travelling with Bonnie and Clyde. When the police learned Methvin had escaped from Bonnie and Clyde, they guessed Bonnie and Clyde would search for him at his father's. So the police set up an ambush along the road they expected them to take. On the 19th of May, 1934, the police took Methvin's father's truck and placed it along Highway 154, hoping Clyde would slow down if he saw it. At 19.15am, the plan worked. Clyde did spot the truck and slow down. The police opened fire. The police shot more than 130 bullets at the couple. Crowds gathered just to get a look at them. Although Bonnie had requested that she was buried with Clyde, they were buried in different cemeteries according to their family's wishes. Bonnie was really into poetry and I'm going to read you the last poem she wrote which is called The Story of Bonnie and Clyde. You read the story of Jesse James and how he lived and died. If you're still in need of something to read, here's the story of Bonnie and Clyde. Now Bonnie and Clyde are the Barrow Gang. I'm sure you all have read how they rob and steal and those who squeal usually found dying or dead. There's lots of untruths to these write-ups. They're not as ruthless as that. Their nature is raw, they hate all the law, the store pigeons, spotters and rats. They call them cold-blooded killers, they say they're heartless and mean. But I say with pride that I once knew Clyde when he was honest and upright and clean. But the law fooled around, kept taking him down and locking him up in a cell, till he said to me I'll never be free, so I'll meet a few of them in hell. The road was so dimly lighted there were no highway signs to guide, but they made up their minds if all roads were blind, they wouldn't give up till they died. The road gets dimmer and dimmer, sometimes you can hardly see, but it's fight man to man and do all you can, for they know they can never be free. From heartbreak some people have suffered, from weariness some people have died, but take it all in all, our troubles are small, till we get like Bonnie and Clyde. If a policeman is killed in Dallas and they have no clue or guide, if they can't find a feed, they just wipe their slate clean and hang it on Bonnie and Clyde. There's two crimes committed in America, not accredited to the Barrow mob. They had no hand in the kidnap demand, nor the Kansas City Depot job. A newsboy once said to his buddy, I wish old Clyde would get jumped. In these awful hard times, we'll make a few dimes if five or six cops would get bumped. The police haven't got the report yet, but Clyde called me up today. He said, don't start any fights. We aren't working nights. We're joining the NRA. From Irvine to West Dallas Viaduct is known as the Great Divide, where the women are kin and the men are men, and they won't stall on Bonnie and Clyde. If they try to act like citizens and rent them a nice little flat, about the third night, they're invited to fight by sub guns rat tat tat. They don't think that they're too smart or desperate. They know that the law always wins. They've been shot at before, but they do not ignore that death is the wages of sin. Some day they'll go down together. They'll bury them side by side. To few it will be grief, to the law a relief. But it's death. Bonnie and Clyde. I just wanted to show you the outfit I put together inspired by Faye Dunaway's portrayal of Bonnie in the 1967 film. I decided to go for this outfit that she was wearing because I know during the time of the film's release this outfit became very popular and a lot of people were copying the look. Everything I'm wearing here for this look I got from the online store Shein and I think all together it only cost me about £25. Thank you very much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!